maqasidana wa ghafir lana ma mada ya wasi'al karami aya sabu sabu Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yang berbahagia, Tan Sri Datuk Sri Sanusi Junid, President of International Islamic University, Malaysia. Yang berbahagia, Professor Datuk Dr. Said Arabi Aidid, Rector of International Islamic University, Malaysia. Yang berbahagia, Professor Datuk Dr. Muhammad Azmi Omar, Chairman of IIUM 23rd Convocation, Representatives of Vice Chancellors, Senate Members, Tan Sri, Dato, Honorable Guests, Deans, Directors, Professors, Lecturers of International Islamic University, Malaysia, Graduates of 23rd Islamic, you know, International Islamic University, Malaysia Convocation, Members of media, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and a very good morning. Yang Barbahagya, Tan Sri Datuk Sri Sanusi Junit, the Honorable President of the International Islamic University, Malaysia, will now declare open the third session of the 23rd Convocation Ceremony of the International Islamic University, Malaysia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I hereby declare open the third session of the 23rd Convocation Ceremony of the International Islamic University Malaysia for the presentation of degrees. I have the pleasure to call upon 
Ustaz Muhammad Zaki Abdul Ghani from the Sultan Haji Ahmad Shah Mosque to recite Surah Al-Alaq. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلب علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم كلا إن الإنسان لا أرواه استغنى إن إلى ربك رجعا أرأيت الذي ينهى عبدا إذا صلى أرأيت إن كان على الهدى أو أمر بالتقوى أرأيت إن كذب وتولى ألم يعلم بأن الله يرى كلا لا إلا ينتهي لنسفا بالناصية ناصية كاذبة خاطئة فليدع ناديه سندع الزبانية كلا لا تطعه واسجد وقترب صدق الله العظيم. I have the pleasure to call upon Yang Berbahagia, Professor Dato Dr. Said Arabi Aided. The Honorable Rector of the International Islamic University of Malaysia to deliver his speech. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alamin. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Yang berbahagia Tan Sri Datuk Sri Sanusri Junaid. President of the International Islamic University in Malaysia. Yang berbahagia Prof. Datuk Dr. Muhammad Azmi Umar, Chairman of IIUM 23rd Convocation. Senate members, Tansri Tansri, Datuk Datuk, 
directors, professors, lecturers of the International Islamic University, Malaysia, graduates, parents, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It is both an honor and pleasure to be able to welcome all our respected guests, parents and members of the university community to the 23rd Convocation Ceremony. First of all, I'm obliged to acknowledge the great favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for enabling me to shoulder the amanah I have been entrusted with as rector of this university. I must express my appreciation to the president of IIUM, Tan Sri Sanusi, members of the Board of Governors, members of Majlis, the academic community, the gender staff, students, and of course, graduates, for your help in helping me to carry out my duties as rector of this university. Today, as Malaysia celebrates its 50th years of independence, we also should reflect on our achievements and plan to do what ought to be further accomplished. The years ahead will witness the global workforce becoming more mobile and more universities will be established as there is a need to offer educational programs of the highest quality, IIUM has embarked on the quality initiatives to ensure that the mission of the Malaysian Public University's Quality Assurance Code of Practice is addressed. Central to the Quality Assurance System is the Internal Quality Assurance Initiatives, and to that effect, IIUM has adopted the Balanced Scorecard Framework since December 2004. It is expected that by the end of this year, all kulias, centres and divisions will have their own balanced scorecard. Alhamdulillah, to date, seven kulias and 11 divisions and centres, including the Sultan Ahmad Shah Mosque, have been awarded their respective ISOs. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as the call today is for teaching universities to function also as research universities, there are strong and compelling reasons for all universities in developing countries to create, apply, and perpetuate knowledge. We are happy to note that a call for more research to be conducted has been well received by our academic staff. Nevertheless, we shall continue to emphasize on research in the coming years. Related to the knowledge building, IIUM has adopted an accelerated research culture among the postgraduate students. Currently, there are 2,800 postgraduate students. This number of postgraduate students augurs well for the IIUM's target to become a research-based university by year 2010. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, this university has all along subscribed to the notion that organizational excellence is a product of excellent people. Students, in particular in this, in this university, are groomed to be, to be leaders with programs in leadership and management skills, volunteerism and entrepreneurship. The year 2006 witnessed a high spirit of volunteerism such that about 50% of our students participated in at least one activity from the 926 programs offered. IIUM has boosted its international image by its success in international debates and mooting activities. Worthy of mention is the entrepreneurship program that began in 2003. With funds from the government and the private sector, IIUM has trained over 20 facilitators or trainers who will then liaise and are liaising with various government agencies to provide entrepreneurship skills for students who are interested in starting a business after graduation. In retrospect, continuous change for development 
in universities should be the order of the day. Most importantly, I think each university should create an identity that is grounded in its declared mission and vision. IIUM is an Islamic university, and it has always aspired to be excellent in order to restore the leading and progressive role of the Muslim Ummah in all branches of knowledge. The values of Islam have enjoined us to be cooperative and tolerant with other institutions of learning. This university was set up with the support of the OIC countries, but we owe our gratitude to the Malaysian government, as more than 90% of our finance comes from the Malaysian government. To that, we should owe our appreciation to the support of Ya Ahmad Muhammad, Datuk Sri Abdullah Ahmad Badawi, and to the Minister of Higher Education, Datuk Mustafa Muhammad. As we usher in this occasion with great gratitude, let us resolve to be the best among the best, insha'Allah. Wa bilahi taufiq wal hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It is with great honour I call upon Yang Berbahagia Tan Sri Datuk Sri Sanusi Junid, the Honourable President of the International Islamic University Malaysia, to deliver his speech. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya ilmursalin Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Yang berbahagia Prof. Dr. Datuk Syed Ahmad Aidit Syed Arabi Aidit Rektor Universiti Islam Antarabangsa Malaysia Yang berbahagia Prof. Datuk Dr. Muhammad Azmi Umar Chairman of the 23rd IIUM Convocation, Wakil-wakil daripada universiti-universiti, Kaki Tangan Akademik dan Pentadbiran, Tif-Tif Terhormat, Ibu-ibu, Bapa-Bapa, Waris-Waris, Para Pelajar dan Para Hadirin yang dihormati sekalian. Sama-sama kita bersyukur kepada Allah Subhanahu SWT atas limpah rahmatnya dan keizinannya sehingga kita berada dalam keadaan sehat dan sejahtera di dalam majlis convocation yang ke-23 pada hari ini. Selaku Presiden Universiti Islam Antarabangsa Malaysia, saya berasa sungguh bertuah kerana dapat bersama-sama dengan ibu bapa, waris dan sanak saudara kepada graduan dari seluruh dunia yang akan menerima pelbagai ijazah. Kepada semua para graduan, ibu bapa dan waris, saya ucapkan tahniah. It is both a great pleasure and an honour as President of the International Islamic University Malaysia to have this opportunity, to, opportunity today to congratulate all graduates for the satisfaction that you have earned and for your achievements after having persevered with hard work over the years. In five more days, on 31st August 2007, Malaysia will be celebrating the completion of its 50th year of independence. The whole nation is now being geared up for this celebration, and it is rightly so. It is a joyous occasion for the people of Malaysia. However, while we are celebrating this joyous occasion, we should also remember that none of us here, none of us here among the graduates, the parents and the staff of the university played any role in the struggle for independence. Neither today's cabinet ministers and parliamentarians, nor state executive councillors and state assemblymen were involved in the struggle. Except for the very few pre-Merdeka activists, 
who are still among us, such as Tun Dr. Mahadir, Tun Ghazali Shafi'i, Tun Fatima Hashim, Tan Sri Zahari Taib, and Datuk Siti Rahmah of Negeri Sembilan, who are known to me, and a few whom I could not remember, others are not around to celebrate. We should all be grateful to our forefathers for the success of their struggle in freeing us from the yoke of colonialism. The question before us is therefore whether our descendants are able to celebrate the continuing peace and progress as we are enjoying now 50 years hence. For all graduates, local and foreign, who will be inheriting the leadership roles at various levels in their own respective countries, there is probably something to learn from the 50 years of Malaysia. A country like Malaysia, where the people speak a variety of mother tongues, practice different religions and faiths, coming from different racial and cultural backgrounds, and live on different levels of prosperity, peace cannot be an accident. Malaysia's leaders over the last 50 years have persevered, has preserved peace in the country by continuous planning, implementing, controlling, monitoring and manoeuvring. Malaysia is definitely a country without ideology. It has a pragmatic government with leaders who are ready to use whatever systems so long as they are considered fair and just and will help satisfy the developmental needs of the country and the people. If you insist on describing Malaysia's ideology, you may call it unitism, as Malaysia stresses on unity for its survival. It is called unity in diversity. The Malaysian constitution declared Islam as a state religion, which therefore facilitates the development of Islamic infrastructure and funding for Islamic activities such as education and made possible the establishment of this university. The claim that Malaysia and Islamic State merely confirm that the country is being headed and ruled by Muslim leaders, monarchs and ministers who are committed to Islam. The counterclaim of Malaysia being a secular state is only a confirmation of its tolerancy towards the other faiths. The claim and counterclaim are normally made by politicians without them being necessarily committed towards their respective religions and faiths. It is important not to forget that in the hereafter, it is humans that will go to heaven or otherwise, and not nations and organizations. It is also important to note that the respect for Islam from the non-Muslims and the degree of secular activities within any country is very much dependent on the character and strength of the Muslim leaderships at all levels. Malaysia can claim to have proportionately more Muslims who are committed to Islam than some Arabic-speaking countries in the Middle East. Malaysian Catholics are more committed to Catholicism than their co-religionists in Italy. Malaysian Protestants attend to church activities because of their conviction, devotion, and not merely for ceremonial purposes as the Anglicans in Britain. Malaysian Hindus carry out their religious activities without any lack or hindrance. Malaysian Buddhists are happy without, with the freedom to worship. The Hindus and the Buddhists of Malaysia are happy that they have in Malaysia among the biggest monuments of their deities. The Muslim Malay leadership of Malaysia has correctly diagnosed and the conflicting trends and attitudes of the people of Malaysia and have so far adopted and managed a correct balancing act for national peace and stability, which is a prerequisite for national development. It is in making the right diagnosis and making the correct choices from among the various available routes and methodologies that determine the measure of leadership of nations. If the Malays, the Muslims of Malaysia and the Muslims of the world need to look for a lost item, it should not be where there is light, but it should be where it is lost. At an international conference on Iraq held in Bogor, Indonesia, on the 2nd and 3rd April 2007, both the leaders and ulama were brought in from all over the world.
to find ways and means for the Sunni and the Shias of Iraq to compromise for peace. This is certainly not the Malaysian approach, as the people of the different religions in Malaysia do not compromise their religions. The Iraqis in Iraq, before the American terrorized them with war, were not united by such religious compromises. But because of the Ba'athist party led by Saddam under socialism and not Islam. All the 38,832,000 students who have graduated from this university, inclusive of the 4,270 who are from about 100 countries, should carry the message that Muslims will perish in their own countries, whether they are in the majority or in the minority, if they decide to fight, whether undermined by foreigners or instigated by interested parties. Muslims worldwide, before talking about confronting their enemies, should not make enemies among themselves. They should decide either to live or die together. If they do not decide, others, not necessarily their friends, will decide for them. We have done it in Malaysia, and you can do it anywhere. On national development, we should observe China and India. As China uses the capitalist economic system within communist politics, it is better for us to look at the growth of non-communist India. I am made to understand that in India, it is the Indian Institute of Technology, IIT, with its many branches, which is responsible for India's success in technology. The IIT is comparable to the best universities in Europe and the USA. If IIT, or Indian Institute of Technology, can do so much for India with more than one billion population, IIUM should aspire to do the same for the more than one billion Muslims. Education is needed not only for the leaders, but also for the workers. It is with this realization that IUM is setting up the Kuliah of Agriculture, as more than 75% of the Muslim population of the world are still involved in agricultural activities. If IUM is to be a university for the Muslim world, it is not right to ignore agriculture altogether. At the Kuliah, we hope to impart not only the knowledge of agriculture, but also to groom the leaders for our agricultural sectors. At the Kuliah of Agriculture, as at all Kuliahs of IUM, the adopted definition of a leader for the Ummah should be clear, descriptive, and simple. For otherwise, it will not serve a useful purpose for the development and the future of the Muslims and Muslim nations. In the 21st Convocation two years ago, I said, however, besides knowledge and knowledge of science and technology, Muslims, their communities, institutions, and nations need leadership, which means having leaders who should be defined as problem solvers. Problem solvers who could monitor and guide the process of change towards progress. Leaders with knowledge should be equipped with the qualities of trustworthiness, courage, discipline, hard work, and loyalty. A leader anywhere should not be defined as a person who just has followers, as even Alibaba had 40 thieves as his followers. We would only be undermining the dignity of the concept of leadership if we include troublemakers and not problem solvers or managers of change process as leaders. In a world where enlightened leadership is wanting, let us hope that all of you will aspire to be great problem solvers using the knowledge that you have acquired at this university. Lee Iacocca entitled his latest book, Where Are the Leaders Gone? He's asking about the United States of America. If we go by our definition of a leader as a problem solver, then the USA is in need of leaders. They only have troublemakers. As young and future leaders at various levels in the public and private enterprises, you must make it your fervent desire to add and improve to what has been done or achieved by your predecessors when you inherit their power and position. You should not be painting your predecessors black if you cannot whiten your image or destroy their creation if you cannot add to 
or create new ventures as your own contribution to your nation. As graduates of IUM, you are expected to be moralist, but it is more important that you to live up to the Islamic moral expectations as a reflection of the spirit of the alumni, being prepared with knowledge, mot motivation, leadership, and iman. Graduates of IUM has both their national and international roles to play. Upon graduation, I hope that every graduate will be active within the alumni network in order to further develop the existing friendship among graduates, leading towards strengthening the unity of the Muslim Ummah. Let us hope that knowledge that you have acquired will provide you with employment. With your knowledge, motivation, leadership, Iman and the spirit of unity, we can hope, inshallah, to overcome the massive problems of poverty and underdevelopment in the Muslim world. Saya ucapkan tahniah kepada ibu bapa dan pejaga sekalian dan terima kasih kerana memilih UAE. Sekian wabillahi taufik. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I have the pleasure to call upon Assistant Professor Dr. Basri Hassan, Dean, Kulia of Information and Communication Technology for the presentation of degrees. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I respectfully call upon Yang Berbahagia, Tan Sri Datuk Sri Sanusi Junik. The Honourable President of the International Islamic University of Malaysia to present the degrees of Bachelor of Computer Science, Bachelor of Information Technology, and Bachelor of Management Information System to the graduates. Bachelor of Computer Science with Honours. Muhammad Fahim bin Muhammad Ezani Muhammad Safwan bin Abdul Rahim Ainin Salwa binti Ahmad Faizul Farhana binti Muhammad Fadil Intan Suhana binti Hasan Nurul Diana binti Yusuf Nurul Fizah binti Cik Rahim Nurul Husna binti Mahathir Salmiza binti Saul Hamid Wan Duryati binti Wan Sulaiman Yusnida binti Ismail Muhammad Hanif bin Maidin Bachelor of Information Technology with Honours Abdullah Abdul Malik Abdullah Al Arashi Hairul Azni bin Muhammad Isa Hassan Mohamed Nur Hassan Muhammad Mustafa
Mohammed Hassan Yusuf, Nazrin bin Abdul Asim, Omar Abdul Omar Al Sharani, Yin Khwat Beng. Zulazizi bin Tusiran Elias Sahri Fariha binti Alias Yati binti Cik Yop Nur Azrin binti Mahat Nur Hayani binti Abdul Rahim Nur Rashikin binti Ismail Nur Zaris binti Zanel Abidin Nur Fiza binti Selamat Nur Hidayah binti Ahmad Zamzuri Siti Afiza binti Abdul Wahab Siti Syahidah binti Muhammad Kamal Abdul Aziz Mugahid Ahmad Al-Ashwal Abdul Rahman Hamid Muhammad Hassan Adnan Ahmad Sarhan Adnan Hussain Hassan Al Dole, Ali Mutahar Muhammad Al Shami, Magid Salim Aid Al Mary, Muhammad Asfia bin Anwar. Muhammad Ahmed Muhammad Al Faki, Muhammad Salman Elias Mountain Nun Tun, Muhammad bin Abdul Rahman, Muhammad Firdaus bin Wangit, Yudin bin Johar Muhammad Aizat bin Yaakob Muhammad Azril bin Jamaluddin Muhammad Hairul Fahmi bin Muhammad Haris Muhammad Hisham bin Ujang Muhammad Radhi bin Ismail Muhammad Syairani bin Hashim Muhammad Zanuri bin Cikpa Muhammad Ikram bin Zulkurnain Najihan bin Muhammad Ibrahim Nur Idham bin Nurdin Umar Adin Syekh Almi 
Sami Muhammad Ahmad Bashamah Syarizal Amri bin Abdul Aziz Syarizat bin Abdullah Tarik Ikanovic Yunis Salim Ahmad Bakuban Azira binti Abdul Manaf Fauzia Elias Tin Zar Lat Intan Syafinas binti Muhammad Kamal Jawahir Ibrahim Mustafa Lili Izwana binti Muhammad Mustaza Nadia binti Muhammad Adnan Nur Hanani binti Abdullah Nur Ardib Haji Yusuf Nur Hidayah binti Ahmad Bukri Salila Daloh Siti Farus binti Azmi Wan Nur Diana binti Wan Abdullah Bachelor of Management Information System with Honors Muhammad Yasir bin Hamidun Saiful Hafsham bin Hamza I have the pleasure to call upon Professor Dr. Zaliha Kamarudin, Dean Ibrahim Ahmad Ibrahim Kuliah of Laws for the presentation of degrees and diploma. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I respectfully call upon Yang berbahagia Tan Sri Datuk Sri Sanusi Junid, the Honourable President of the International Islamic University Malaysia, to present the degrees of Bachelor of Laws with Honours, Bachelor of Laws Sharia, and Diploma in Sharia Law and Practice to the graduates.